of commodities which continue to rise on a daily basis, the hopelessness of our people must be replaced by serious hard work. We also must ensure that we start creating an enabling environment for those who want to invest in our country, domestic investors mm. as well as investors, to start playing their part in redeveloping our, our nation. So you have this planned out in the first 100 days. Yes. Uh, and beyond the 100 days, what, 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 are, what are the plans for Zimbabwe? Well, like I've said, we have a, even a bigger agenda going mm. forward, a rural transformation program. We want to see our rural areas change. There is a misnomer. There is a feeling that if people are in the rural areas, they cannot become themselves agents of economic change. We want to address this matter by titling our people, giving them the wherewithal to become masters of their own destiny. We need a whole inclusive economy, which is being discussed. We are going to have economic summits now as part of our campaigns. We are focusing on the economy, immediate, uh, mid-term, as well as long-term. And the way we are going to do it going forward is that let's discuss what is it that we have in our various provinces, our strengths and weaknesses, and what role should the people play in generating economic activities in their areas. This is a major challenge that will build on the capacities we have. For instance, Matabelan region, huge cattle country. How are we going to you know, make that whole sector vibrant again. Revival of Blawai requires that the cattle industry is back on steam. The same goes for the mining industry. We need these two to play a part. The two major assets a country has, it's has subsoil assets and surface assets. Your land that you use for agriculture, the mm. water, flora and fauna, as well as your mineral resources, judiciously managed, those can uplift any nation. And Zimbabwe has enough. We have enough to go around us. We have almost over 13 trillion tons of gold and what are we using it for i'd like to hear more of your plans when it comes to the issue to do with gold because uh zimbabwe has been in in the headlines because of uh how you're exporting exporting your gold what you're doing with your gold i'd like to hear your plans honorable but we'd like to just you know pause uh on that we'll go we'll go to the news headlines thereafter we continue our conversation you're listening to rhb right here on your hot station number one for news and entertainment we're having a conversation with uh independent presidential candidate in the forthcoming uh, general elections in Zimbabwe. Uh, Honorable Savia uh, Kasukuero joins us on The Breakfast Show this morning. Easy noodles. Nizi. Available in five great flavors. Beef, chicken, spicy chicken, vegetable, and now chicken onion. The news headlines every second hour are sponsored by Swan Insurance Zambia. For you, for them, for life. Swan, for life. Good morning, headlines at 8. U.S. Ambassador to Zambia, Michael Gonzalez, says growth in the mining sector has been hampered by policy inconsistencies under the previous governments. Citizens First President Harry Kalava says he awaits to see how the New Dawn government will utilize the 5.8 billion United States dollars that will be saved from the deferred payments on loan maturities following the successful debt restructuring program. British High Commissioner to Zambia Nicholas Woolley says there is need to expedite the enactment of the Access to Information Bill into law. In international news, U.S. President Joe Biden has landed in the U.K. ahead of a NATO summit in Lithuania later this week, which comes after several allies questioned his call to send cluster bombs to Ukraine. And in sports, the Zambia women's national team has arrived in New Zealand for the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. And the headlines, join us for more at 9. Zambia's award-winning and most trusted news and entertainment provider. 
Consistently delivering unrivaled world-class radio 24-7, 365. We are Hot FM. At Zanaco, we believe that part of life's formula is saving. That is why we are improving your village banking experience with our Village Banking Plus account. Enjoy attractive interest rates at the end of your cycle, free banking, and more. Let us be part of the growth of your village banking. Open a Zanaco Village Banking Plus account today. Call 5000 for more information. Zanaco, growing communities through savings. The time is 8.02. This time check is brought to you by Zanaco. Did you know that Zanaco has relaxed borrowing requirements for small business loans, access invoice discounting, local purchase order finance, and short-term loans of up to 18 months today by emailing smebanking at zanaco.co.za. Grow your SME business with Zanaco. We've made it quick and easy to access facilities such as invoice discounting and local purchase order financing. That's not all. You can get a short-term loan of up to 18 months to finance your business. Now that's making business easy. Simply email smebanking at zanaco.co.za for more information. If you are looking for a station that's got the best DJs and music that's fat, pumped up and all that, you are on the right station. Hot FM, number one for news and entertainment. The most important meal of the day is definitely breakfast. Start your day off on the right foot with the right information on the Red Hot Breakfast from six to nine hours. Relationship managers advise you, but who gives them advice? Who's checking your investments are still performing? With Standard Chartered Priority Banking, you don't need to stop and think. Investing with us goes further. Our relationship managers are trained, certified, backed by a team of investment experts, a complete support network. We connect you to wealth opportunities that match your priorities. Join today. Your host station, upon for news and entertainment, which you're listening to. Uh, in case you're just joining us, we're having a conversation with Honorable Sevia Kasukuwere, who is the independent presidential candidate for the forthcoming uh, general elections in Zimbabwe that are uh, scheduled to take place on the 23rd of August. And he joins us on the Red Hot Breakfast uh, this morning. We're looking at issues to do with your uh, the, the details of your manifesto yes, and you. Uh, you know how you are going to uh, how you plan on just, you know, uh, working on the Zimbabwean uh, economy and recapitalizing the country as a whole. Let's look at the, the goals, because you, you mentioned a few, um, you know, um, other sectors where you'd want to see economic growth and the ones where you feel it can spiral into economic growth for the country. How do you plan on handling, uh, you know, uh, Zimbabwe's gold? Because it's coming under the limelight of late, and obviously... There, there are some people that have complimented the way that uh, the current president, Emerson Mnangagwa, has handled this, uh, the gold sector and how private, uh, you know, the private sector has played a hand in ca- recapitalizing Zimbabwe's gold and you know, uh, making sure that Zimbabwe is benefiting from this uh, gold. How do you plan on uh, doing it? Well, this sector is so critical because, one, it employs, in other words, thousands and thousands of our young people are involved in the gold sector. Unfortunately, Many of them are not operating legally. It's now necessary that we legalize the sector, we put in place systems that will allow for them to produce and sell to identified buyers who are probably your fidelity, uh, which is the national state Mm -hmm. uh, institution run by the Reserve Bank, which buys the gold. We have seen over the years that a lot of gold has been lost. Close to a billion dollars per annum Mm -hmm. is lost. And some of these scandals we're talking about speaks to the, 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 the uh, challenges we have in this sector. We think a proper structure that recognizes the miner, the SME miner, he has his papers, he's registered, he has training, and they are also looking after their environment. They are just not doing it for the sake of doing it and destroying the environment. We harmonize the activity around the gold sector. There's no doubt that Zimbabwe will be able to get more gold into its coffers and that is the gold anyway, the illicit one, mm-hmm. which is actually finance our economy. Mm-hmm. Right now, quite a number of young people are engaged in gold. They move it in South Africa. It is sold there. and They bring in goods for industry and commerce. We mm-hmm. need to legalize this process. We have been penalizing our people 
seven years in jail for being found in possession of gold. I mean, what do you expect somebody who's moving in a mango uh, uh, area full of mango trees? Will he not stop and just have a bite? You arrest him for that? This is exactly what we have. We have gold everywhere in our country, but it must be mined correctly. We must train our people. We want to expand the training programs that are in, encouraging or will be to prepare our young people to do the mining correctly. We need to bring this whole gold and buy it, pay them nicely, handsomely, and get this gold from the SMEs, which actually right now is greater than what is coming from the formal sector. Mm -hmm. The SMEs have eclipsed the formal sector. So we need to start, you know, harnessing that resource so that the country can benefit. Um, you were you in cabinet before under the leadership of the late president, uh, Robert Mugabe. What do you bring to the table that's different now that you couldn't do then? Experience and knowing where the corners are. The current president can say the same. Well, he has failed to negotiate them. That's why he's had so many accidents in the process. And what makes, it, uh, what makes you so sure that you won't have the same accident? No, I'm not him. I'm not Emerson Nanga. Well, mm -hmm. And I'll not do what he's doing. Because I think what he's doing is, is, is uh, tragic. You can't allow a country to go through this kind of the crisis, mm -hmm. theft that's uh, unabated. Uh, you do nothing about it, and you allow even closer people to you to be involved in this corruption. When corruption stinks to the high heavens, when it's on steroids, you can't be doing that. So, please, I'm Xavier Kasukwere. Mm -hmm. He's Emerson Nangagwa. Having been part of the, of the system, many citizens might have lost trust in you as a leader. We, with merely a month before the country goes to the polls, how do you aim to regain the trust of the voters? Well, the voters are not choosing only one person. There's a cast of 11 people. Most of them have also been in government. Chamisa was in government with me. We became ministers together. 209, we became ministers together. Mm -hmm. Now, the trust deficit, it is a critical point that you are raising. We need to restore the trust in leadership and the people. Our people look at all politicians as criminals, people who can be trusted, who give promises. Our billboards have you know, beautiful uh, themes and promises, but we do exactly nothing. Now, I'm a practical politician. We want to do, we want to show the world a difference. We can do better. Mm -hmm. And I have no doubt that one of the things that we must work on is a social contract for people to start respecting government. That's why I'm saying as an independent. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be put, put in through this patronage system where you have to uh, not talk to everybody who's given you support. I want to be a people's candidate, a people's president who represents the interests of the people. I grew up in a village. I understand what the people in the village have been going through. I've been in business. I'm a businessman. I've been a politician. I'm a political leader. That experience puts me in good stead to say, let us reconnect let us rebuild our trust and i want that trust to be restored i have a different viewpoint altogether and i can assure you the new deal i'm putting on the table the new promise i'm putting on the table a vision for a country will see more trust in politicians than another time <clears throat> there's another issue honorable um there's an issue about your eligibility to stand because of your residence uh you have lived outside zimbabwe for a long time now and uh that apparently disqualifies you how do you respond to that subjudice it's before the courts i can't mm. talk about that but i'm a zimbabwean how do you disqualify me from my my roots where was where have i been who knows where i've been the proof to produce all the evidence must come from the accuser those who are accusing should be able to say yes it's not been in the, our country for so long but anyway with a diaspora policy. Our laws allow even for people in the diaspora to vote. So this is all the tactics of cowards. They are scared of the elections. Now they have to look for everything. Why Kasukwe? There are many candidates there. We have never stayed in Zimbabwe. Busha, he stays in South Africa. He has never, he has no house in Zimbabwe. Why turn around and talk about me? They are scared. They are running scared. They've got court cases. Running every day, they're looking for a loophole. Let the people decide. I am going into the elections, and I'll be standing. Don't worry about this, these noisemakers. Honorable, as we bring this to a close, uh, in your opinion, is there a possibility of Zimbabwe to achieve uh, you know, a, a government of national unity? And wh what will it require for this to happen? Well, Zimbabwe should. And these are the experience we draw from 1980. 
when Mugabe put up his cabinet, he put a cabinet in 1980 which brought in rivals. Uh, more than a government of national unity, you can have a government that brings everybody into government. The president has seven ministers who he can choose from academics, civil society. Apart from that, the various political parties, independents, ZANU-PF, MDC, Triple C, this is a huge cast where we can pick credible characters who will become part and parcel of government with one objective. Let's restore transparency, accountability, let's fight corruption and bring up our economy. We want to tone down the noise around politics. We've made so much noise over the past 20 years and this is why our people are suffering. This is why our people are all over the world. We now need to focus internally and fix our own issues as Zimbabweans by coming up with a government that brings all shades and manner of people to do what is necessary to uplift our country. We can't afford another five years of conflict, another five years of hatred, another five years of corruption. We now need to start going. We need to start moving. We need to start running on uniting our people and ensuring that we have a government that is looking after the interests of each and every Zimbabwe, not partisan. Honorable, I'd like to thank you very much for coming through to the Red Hot Breakfast. Thank you very much. There you have it. That's uh, independent presidential candidate for the forthcoming uh, elections in Zimbabwe on the 23rd of August. Uh, Honorable Saviour Kasukwera speaking to us on the Red Hot Breakfast show this morning.